I'm Evan Leroy and this is New School Barbecue. Leroy and Lewis Barbecue is a little blue food truck off South Congress in Austin, Texas that cooks locally sourced barbecue on homemade pits. We try our best to honor where barbecue comes from while respectfully adding our own modern touches. These are our recipes, methods, travels, and stories. This is New School Barbecue. Hey barbecue fans, Evan Leroy here. This is our hop sausage video originally published on May 27th of 2020. This is one of our longest videos and it goes into our entire sausage process from the beginning to the end, all the way from breaking down a ham off of a whole hog to smoking and slicing the sausage. Curing, grinding, casing, smoking. It's also one of our processes that has changed most since publishing this video and evolved most since we started making sausage way back in 2017 for Leroy and Lewis. Because of that, I'm gonna be popping in periodically through the video, updating you on things that have changed, formulas that have changed, and little tiny things here and there. But other than that, enjoy the video. If you can't wait till next week for another YouTube video, head on over to our Patreon, where you can subscribe for $30 a month and get access to over 100 videos. It's a library of videos that covers everything on our menu, every special we do, every special event we do. Even if you just wanna subscribe for a month, watch all the videos drop off, and then in a couple months, resubscribe to see the ones you missed, that's cool too. But if you just wanna wait, they'll all eventually come out here every Wednesday on our YouTube channel. Either way, like this video, subscribe to this channel, make sure to turn notifications on so you know when we publish new videos. Enjoy, and see you next week, barbecue fans. Welcome back, patrons, to the Leroy and Lewis Kitchen. This week we are tackling sausage, but not just any sausage. We're making our Citra Hop all pork sausage that we serve at the restaurant. So I just finished removing this here ham from a beautiful half hog that we got in from Peaceful Pork. If you want to see me do that, you can check out our previous video on how to break down a pig. But this one is skin off, which is always nice for me personally because I don't have to remove the skin. And that can be a real pain in the butt. So the name of the game here is basically remove the bone. The bone we'll smoke and add to our pork stock. And then we can take the really lean hand meat mixed with all of this beautiful fat cap on top as well as some of this other fat back that I took off the pig. And we can get the perfect ratio of fat to meat. Really not much to it because we're gonna be grinding this up anyway so you don't really have to seam anything out, but I usually divide it into a few different sections just to make life a little bit easier. And then it's all about just removing the fat cap. So beautiful piece of fat, a little bit of meat on there, that's fine. Sausage is not an exact science per se. We'll try our best. And I'm just gonna go all the way around Removing this fat cap. Typically these come with a little bit more fat on them, but when these were processed, whoever took the skin off took a little bit of fat with it, which is why it's like kind of thinned out right here and it's really thick on this end. When we get them skin on, there's a real thick fat cap all the way around. And we usually end up with excess fat, but on this one, it might be a close call to see if we have enough, but we'll find out shortly. So again, I'm kind of just doing some rough work on this, trying to get all the fat off. You don't have to be too exact with these things because the meat has a lot of intramuscular fat anyway, even though this is a ham. Especially if you're working with shoulders too, you know, the ratio is always gonna be a little off because of the amount of fat that's running through the muscles. But we try our best to do what we can. One of the beauties of the sausage that we make here is that we're using fresh hams to make all of our links, which is a really nice cut of meat. You know, ham's got some really good flavor to it and it's some really nice looking pork. So instead of just using whatever scraps the butcher had lying around or any excess trim just off of butchering the hog, we, we got this nice, beautiful, deep red ham meat that makes some wonderful sausage. <laughs> It's one of my favorite muscles in the ham. Sometimes we take little slices and fry it up because, ooh, there's some really good looking pork. Look at that marbling right there. Oh, so tasty. So 
So when it comes to the bone here, just trying to navigate around it. Again, if I was trying to make different cuts, I would be much more delicate with this, but because we're just gonna grind this up anyway, just trying to separate the meat from the bones. So we've gotten most of the meat off this here bone. You can try as much as you want, but I like to leave a little bit on there just to make the stock and the hash a little more flavorful. But basically this is comprised of three bones. You got one here, one here, and then one right now. And uh, you can leave them all connected, but just because we're traveling with them to bring them to the truck to smoke and bring back, I usually try and uh, break them apart and make life easier for the next guy. This is what we're left with. Again, I might dive a little deeper on some of these pieces, but bone number one, bone number two, and bone number three. So now what we have is bones over here that are gonna head to the truck and be smoked for a stock, which goes into hash and rice. We've got this pile of pork fat and this pile of lean ham meat. So now we're gonna cube all this up and get a perfect ratio of fat to meat for our sausage. Basically what I'm doing right now is cubing up all this meat into one inch cubes that look just like that. And that's for two different reasons. One, so they'll fit down the grinder easier. And two, so the salt cure that we're gonna put on it tonight will have more surface area to sink into and get a more even, full penetration of the meat. All right, so this is all of our lean meat cubed up nicely. I weighed it out as we were going. We ended up with about 25 pounds. So now I'm gonna take one third of that. We're gonna do a 70-30 blend of fat to meat. So I'm about to add about eight pounds of fat to this. First of all, it's not exactly a 70-30. It was never really 70-30. Bradley's math, I think, was just a little off. We used to do a 3 to 1 ratio of meat to fat, which would have made it a 75-25 lean meat to fat ratio. But after our sausages were a little inconsistent and started breaking, we lowered the amount of fat and liquid in the overall ratio. And now we go with a 4 to 1 or an 80-20 blend of lean meat to fat. You can also see this super convenient Google Sheet that we've just enter our amount of lean meat and then the formula here will tell us exactly how much fat, salt, pink salt, liquid, and spices we need for our variable amount of lean meat because the hams always come in at slightly different weights. The reason we use the ham for the sausage instead of pork butts is because we use heritage breed hogs. Commodity pigs or pigs that are raised in CAFOs or concentrated animal feeding operations, aka most grocery store pork, is much much leaner. If we used our pork shoulders for sausage they would be way way too fatty and they serve us better as pulled hog anyway. So for a 25 pound batch of sausage that's going to come out to be about 11.3 kilos and as I enter that you can see it populate the rest of the ingredients and it tells us exactly how much we need. That's our meat to fat ratio. We were about 0.2 of a pound shy to make up for the exact 70-30 ratio, which is perfect because that meat has plenty of intramuscular fat to make up for the difference. Now it's time to season it up. All right, so when it comes to sausage, we get pretty creative, but we have a few hard fast rules that we stick by. It's three part meat to one part fat. You add some liquid, in our case ice, but we'll get into that tomorrow, up to 10%, and then kosher salt, which is 1.67% of the weight of the entire batch. And then we do 0.25% of pink salt. So for this 30, 33 pound batch, we are gonna add 1.67% salt, which is about half a pound, comes out to about 250 grams. Perfect, 0.25% pink salt, comes out to be about 50 grams. There we go. And that's all you really need to get a good foundation for sausage. As long as the salt is right, the pink salt is there to keep everything safe during the slow cook. And from here on out, it's just about flavor and preference. So for the hop sausage, we start out with 
some granulated garlic. For a 30 pound batch, I'm gonna add about 80 grams. This is a real basic sausage. It's really, uh, it's pretty classic. Just smoky, porky, and delicious. Garlic and pork are best friends. We're also gonna add 80 grams of dry mustard. Mustard powder is great stuff. It's got a really nice flavor to it. Obviously mustard and pork go together well. This is kind of a German inspired sausage either way. So that works out nicely. Also mustard powder itself is a natural emulsifier, which will help give us a really nice bind on the sausage. We're gonna add about half that amount, 40 grams of coriander. It's got a really nice light floral flavor to it. Next up comes some parsley, about half that amount yet again. We're gonna do about 25 grams of that. And that's strictly for a garnish, makes it look nice. Kind of gives the illusion that there's more hops than there are because like I said, the hops can be very overpowering and just a dab will do ya. So this will add some nice green speckles to our sausage. One of the tricks of the trade. Now we're gonna add some black pepper because we are in Texas after all. You gotta have some black pepper in your sausage. We're gonna do about 30 grams of that. Perfect. And uh, yeah, this is a really solid base to a really nice sausage. It's got just the right amount of salt and pink salt to make it taste good and make it be safe during the cooking process. Garlic to make it taste better. Coriander to reinforce the hops, parsley to make it look nice, and mustard to give it that texture. Let's grind up some hops. So these are the hops we use. These are Citra hops. Pick these up at a homebrew store right down the road from the kitchen, and they come as just nice dried out little nugs. They look and smell a lot like weed. Mmm, very nice, very fruity. That, it's that really nice floral, like hazy IPA smell that you guys are used to from beers. But what we do with these is we take them, we put them in a spice grinder and blend them up until they are nice and fine, just like a powder. And it comes out looking like this. It's a beautiful flavor. This is something else that we don't use anymore. We don't use the whole cone hops. We have transitioned to pellet hops. We put them in a spice grinder and break them down. If you just try to put the whole pellets in or break them up with your fingers or something like that, you're gonna be left with whole pieces and those are gonna get into your sausage and not completely break down all the way. And when you bite into it, it's gonna be super, super bitter. We only use a small amount of hops in the sausage because they are super bitter. If you think about the amount of hops that goes into a huge batch of beer, if you've ever homebrewed any beer, it's a very small amount. Same thing with the sausage. A very small amount of hops is gonna go a long way, gonna provide a little bit of floral taste and uh, just a little bit of bitterness to the sausage, which is gonna kind of butt up well against the super, uh, fatty pork and smokiness of it. Same consistency as kosher salt or pepper or anything, so it'll mix up really well with the sausage. It's got such a very strong aroma to it that we don't really need to add too much. So we're gonna add about 10 grams of this to a 30 pound batch, and that'll be more than plenty to get that flavor into our sausage. And that is our spice mix. We mix this all together, and then we add it to our pork and fat. All right, now that we have the seasoning on here, we're just gonna mix it all up, make sure it's evenly dispersed, and we're gonna let it sit overnight. And this is probably the best tip you'll get from this video, which is let the seasonings, mostly the salts, penetrate the meat overnight. Basically, we'll come back tomorrow, and instead of being this light pink color, everything will be dark red, and it'll have a completely different texture. Everything will firm up because of the salt and that will make it grind so much better and will ensure that every single piece is seasoned all the way through. I'm just gonna get this evenly dispersed, wrap it up, and then I'll see y'all in the morning. All right, so this meat has been sitting on cure in the fridge for about 24 hours now. And as you can see, the meat is very nice, dark, very firm to the touch. It's got a great feel to it. You can really tell it's got a nice kind of firm, like almost like a, like a, like a tuna steak or something feel to it. But this is ready to go. This is a 30 pound batch. So I've got just under three pounds of 
ice. And again, the only difference here is that we adjusted the amount of ice we put in. In this recipe, in this video, it's saying we use 10% ice. We brought that down a little bit. We now use a 5% liquid ratio in our sausage. All the other ratios are gonna be the same with the salt being 1.67%, with the pink salt being one quarter of 1%. Those ratios are still the same. The difference is gonna be in the liquid ratio. The ice is gonna help add moisture, but also keep everything cold throughout the grind. Because if you grind meat that's not really, really cold, the fat tends to smear and smush and starts to render because there is some friction and heat going on in here. So the ice helps keep everything nice and cold. Also adding liquid to your sausage is a very big pro tip to make sure you end up with a plump, juicy link. So, that being said, it's time to start grinding. In an ideal world, if you're doing a smaller batch at home, I would highly recommend throwing this into the freezer for a bit before you grind it. Because like I said, being really cold is what's gonna give you a really nice grind. We don't have a freezer big enough for a batch this big at the moment, so we work with what we got. But the ice definitely helps. We're running this through a, uh, I believe it's a 10 millimeter die on the, on the grinder, really coarse. You can see that it's nice and chunky, got some good texture to it. Get that nice Texas style sausage going on. We're just sending it through, ice and all. All these uh, spices have kind of hydrated and kind of bonded to the meat, which is really nice. Really developed a lot of flavor. And the reason I, I made this recipe with specifically granulated spices was just for consistency sake. That way we can recreate it every week this exact same way but if you're working at home or making your own sausage you can also use fresh garlic fresh onion fresh herbs and spices all that good stuff you can tell just by looking at it that it's a totally different color than it was earlier last night when it was uh, raw meat like this the salt here really helps and the pink salt gives it that nice deep red kind of like what you see when you uh, cure bacon or ham And if you're doing creative sausages, you can add liquid in many different forms. Ice is traditional and works really well, like I said, for uh, keeping everything cold, but you can also add it in form of stalks or juices or well, anything like that. All right, and that is our farce. Looks real nice. Get all the ice and all those seasonings mixed up in there. But now comes the most important part of sausage making, and that is mixing this to a very nice consistency. Because unlike a meatloaf or a burger or something where you don't want to over mix it because it gets too tight, that's exactly what we're going for here. So we're going to basically just mix this up, and it's really cold, and your hands are going to get chilly. But we're going to mix this up until it becomes a nice cohesive mass and it sticks to our hand and all that, all those little tricks. And basically what happens when we're doing that, we're breaking down the enzymes and everything will kind of bond together. And that's what's gonna give us that really nice tight texture. Cause if we case this up right now, it would just be super loose, just taco meat in a casing. So we're gonna mix this up for a good 15 minutes straight. The other big difference that we are doing now is that we're adding milk powder to our sausage. We were resistant to do this for a really long time because we didn't want anybody with a dairy allergy to not be able to eat our sausage. Uh, but after testing it out, it was just undeniable how much better the texture was. You can see the texture of the sausage in this video is really good, but with the milk powder, the bind is just so tight and the texture of the sausage is just so good. It makes the casing really snappy too. It just really improves the overall texture of our sausage. And we add that in at a 2% of the total weight. So for this a batch of sausage, we added about 226 grams of milk powder. Whew. All right, after an exhausting mix, this is looking real nice. It's not emulsified like a hot dog or a bologna or something. It's still, but it's still got that nice 
coarse texture to it, but it's definitely blended together. You make a little patty, sticks to the hand. So a lot of old timer sausage guys will tell you. And this is just a really nice looking mixture. Everything's cohesive. You can see the fat is starting to mix in with all the meat. Looks real nice. And once you get it all mixed up like this, you want to case it right away. Otherwise it'll kind of start to form in a big block like this and it'll end up with a big old meatloaf. This is our sausage stuffer. Got this at Cabela's too. There's a manual hand pump, which is my favorite way to make sausage because it's the only way I know how. Basically, you take your meat, put it in here. Then we put it in here. And every crank brings the, the plunger down and meat comes out. As far as casings go, we use natural hog casings. You can pick these up at your local grocery store, typically in the bacon or smoked ham section, or you could just ask the, uh, the butcher. They've got them back there, usually. If not, you can get them on Amazon. They come packed in salt, no matter where you get them from, just to preserve them. So you gotta rinse them out real nicely. Soak them in some warmish water, Rinse the water repeatedly, dissolve all the salt out of there. And what I like to do is run some water through the casing just to kind of clear it out a little bit. So we got some water in there. We're just gonna run that all the way through just to clean it out. And then on it goes. <laughs> I don't care how old you are. If you don't giggle the first time you do this, you're no friend of mine. Rubber gloves and hog casings don't play nicely together, so as long as you keep your hands washed, this is one of the few bare-handed procedures here at Leroy and Lewis. All right, now we're at the end of our casing. I'm gonna tie a little knotty knot at the end. Make sure it's nice and tight. Cut off the tail, and then just start cranking away. Typically the length I go for is about a horseshoe shape like that, a full circle. That way on the cutting board, this will be about quarter pound, quarter pound, quarter. This will be about a full pound of, uh, of sausage. Twist the casing, get a nice end on there. Tie it off as tight to the meat as you can. Cut off tail number two. And that is a beautiful looking link of sausage. Mmm. Mm hmm. And now, rinse and repeat. When it comes to casing, there's a real uh, a skill that can only be learned from doing hundreds of pounds of sausage, which is trying to find the perfect tension to stuff ratio on the casing and the meat. Because if you crank too fast, you're just going to burst your casing like that. But if you don't have enough tension on there, on the casing on this hand, then you're gonna end up with a thin little wiener like that, and that's gonna be real loosey-goosey and no good for sausage. So basically what you're trying to do here is keep the perfect amount of tension with your left hand and even pressure with your right hand. So basically I'm holding this way to make sure that it gets filled up nicely, stays nice and plump, and gets as filled as it can without bursting the casing. And if all goes according to plan, you end up with a perfectly plump sausage that'll stay nice and taut in the casing. So when it comes to casing links, there's uh, a few different camps you can go with. You can go with a full coil, keep going around and around, make one whole sausage just as long as the casing, which can be pretty long. That's kind of nice because you can slice it to order in any increment that you like, but it's also really hard to work with because carrying around like a 50 pound coil can be uh, a bit much. Option number two would be uh, linking your sausages, which is most common practice. That's where you would stuff the casing really thin and then just go around and 
twist the individual links, which is a great way to go about it if you're selling it by the link. But for us, because we have plates and sandwiches and all these different options that have different weights for sausage, we like to serve it by not quite the coil, not quite the link. Like I said, I'm aiming for about a pound of cooked sausage when uh, all things are said and done. That way we can, if someone orders a half pound, we can slice that up if they want a third of a pound for a one meat, two meat plate, we can uh, slice it up because we serve sliced sausage, not by the link. and that is all 30 pounds of sausage cased up looking very nice nice and tot now it's time to cold smoke it so you've just seen bradley break down the hog leg put all this sausage on cure season it grind it mix it case it now we're gonna cold smoke it we're putting sausages on here i don't want the skins to touch because it's going to create a bald spot right here if they're like that or like that or if they're like that we don't we don't want the skins touching because all the smoke is going to cook around it we want it to be nice colored nice snappy the skins will dry out uncovered in the walk-in overnight so the skins dry out a little bit i'm also just going kind of trying to avoid the back and the front over the the back of the smoker away from the door and the front of the smoker away from the fire so i'm going to try to hug the doors and kind of keep away from the back side over there because that's where it's hottest as you can see we've got some cauliflower debris still on here it's okay so the idea with the cold smoke we're going to put these on cook them probably between 150 and 175 for about four to six hours hey guys one more time back again the big difference here is going to be that we don't smoke between 150 and 175 we smoke below 150 for four hours and we do all that smoking really at our commissary now so the sausages will get broken down from the ham on Tuesday and put on cure. On Wednesday, they'll get ground and linked, which we do link them now. We don't do one big link just for consistency's sake, for ease of selling. We just do them link by link now. They get ground and cased and linked on Wednesday. And then on Thursday, they'll get cold smoked. And then we have sausage for Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Wednesday, and then the next Thursday. After they get cold smoked, they get portioned out per day. And we have a nice little pan that says sausages for Saturday, sausages for Sunday. And the person who opens in the morning just pulls those sausages, takes them to the truck, heats them up for about an hour, and then we slice them up for service. We want it to bring up the temperature of the sausage and cook it all the way through without rendering the fat quickly. So when you cook the sausage quickly or when you hot smoke it, uh, what's going to happen is the fat is going to melt and render and leach out uh, and the sausage is, is, not, is just going to be like kind of mealy inside. It, the emulsion is going to break if you cook it too quickly. So we want to bring it up, cook it slowly till it's fully cooked, till it has nice color and a ton of smoke. Then we're going to cool it down very rapidly and then we'll have sausage for the week. So that way we can just reheat it really quickly for service. So that's basically what you get in the store, like any kind of cooked or smoked sausage, kielbasa, or even like a hot dog. Um, that's kind of where it's at. Right now, this is like the Johnsonville broth, right? It's raw, or it's like the you know mild Italian sausage or whatever you get. Come on, Carl. Is that you? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I've pulled the fire all the way up to kind of the door, like the front of the firebox, not toward the back. Normally if we're cooking briskets or if we're cooking cheeks uh, or something we want to cook a little bit hotter, I'm going to push the fire all the way toward the back of the firebox. This is one of the benefits of having such a deep set firebox like this. We can control the heat in the chamber partially by just moving the fire back and forth. I also don't have it stacked up too high. If it's stacked up real high, it's going to burn hotter and faster. If it's kind of down low like this, all kind of spread out, it's going to burn a little uh, lower and longer. Um, and with the heat kind of this way, with the door open, all these steps are to mitigate the amount of heat that actually goes into the chamber. We want to maintain that low, low, low temperature when we're smoking sausage. All right, so the sausage has been cold smoking for about six hours now. As you can see, it's developed this red color to it. We've really dried out the skin. That's gonna give it the good snap. It's been at a low temperature, so the fat hasn't rendered down, but the smoke's been penetrating the meat, 
It's giving that really great smoky flavor that we're looking for. So we're going to pull this off now and let it cool, and then it'll be ready for service. Lastly, the other change we made is that we ice bath the sausages when we cool them down now. So uh, instead of just taking them off, putting them in the walk-in, you can see these ones were just a little bit wrinkly. Uh, when we ice bath them, what it does is shrink the casing to the meat itself and just makes, uh, makes the casing much better, just makes everything much more snappy, makes them look a lot better. It's really just an aesthetic thing on the, on the ice bath, but it makes them much better. <laughs> I'd say these are about done. They look beautiful. They're nice and taut and firm. They look a little greasy. They got good color. They're nice and hot. Let's eat one. 